So how about we use WordPress for what it was intended to be used for? What's going on guys? My name is Leopoldo Perella and if you're new to the channel, I do videos about web design, UX design and the overall design process as well as I share some tips on the way I do certain things like building a content management system on WordPress, tutorials for Webflow and much more. So one thing we have been realizing is that anytime we work on a new project, especially those that require new features and whatnot, there's always a lot to learn. So we thought about if it takes us some research to be able to get the answers to get these things done, that means that someone like you who might be trying to learn something from a web development project or even a web designing project, um, you might also be interested in being able to um, be able to find this, but also make sure that you can follow a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. So we thought about creating some tutorials that we're going to be um, releasing every week. But before I do that, there's something that I've been doing lately and is I want everything to go into my website. I know that I do have a YouTube channel um, where I post all these videos, but at the end of the day, I sort of want my website to also be sort of like a resource for any designer, any developer who is looking for answers and even clients who are trying to figure out how to do some things. So what we're going to do today actually is we're going to use WordPress as what it was intended to be used for and that will be to create a content management system, sort of like a library or a collection of items that we're going to be using to have all of our like Webflow um, tutorials. We're going to divide them into different categories and then we're going to also be able to create a page where if the user goes to, they will be able to um, see all the, let's see, all the Webflow tutorials and different categories on the side they can choose from. So they can go from, let's say, 3D um, integrations in, or interactions in Webflow, maybe developing models on Webflow, and you know, um, mobile design or mobile development on Webflow, things like that. But I know that many times when we think about WordPress and we think about um, how long this will take to be done on WordPress, we sort of tend to shy out. So I'm actually going to show you how you can go into WordPress right now and we think of just using a few plugins, you're going to be able to create, create your own blog types, archives, and also be able to build sort of like a taxonomy so that you can um, link dif different archives or blogs that you wanna be creating now with different categories. So if someone wants to search for them later on, everything will be connected. So with that being said, let's head over to my computer. Mm. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we need to get, I think it's about three plugins, right? And keep in mind I'm using Elementor to be able to create this. One, because it gives me the ability to use dynamic content throughout my website very easy. So what we're gonna go and do right now is that we're gonna head over to our plugins and in our plugins, um, I have already installed them here just to make this video a bit shorter, but we're gonna be looking for um, few specific plugins we're going to look for advanced custom field and we're also going to look for custom post type UI and these are the ones that are, are going to allow us to sort of create our own cost, um, custom management system within WordPress without having to use any code. Now if you're a programmer and you know some PHP you are actually going to be able to do all this with code you just have to write the code and put it on your function.php file and then everything will take place just as we're doing it here. But since there's a lot of no code movement and stuff like that, I want to show you how to simply do this without any code. So once you have installed your plugins, um, the next one that I want you to look for is this one. It's called Ellie Custom Skin. And this is what it's gonna do is that it's going to allow you to further customize Elementor so that whenever you're trying to create cards or you're trying to create the layout of your blog post or your archives, we're going to be able to do all that. So once you have done that, um, you should be able to refresh your page and on the left menu, you are going to see custom fields and CPT UI. So because we are trying to build a custom post type or an archive, we are going to start with um, the CPT UI, the custom post type, and we're gonna click add, add new. 
and here we're gonna call this Webflow Tutorials as our slug and then for this one we just wanna see Webflow Tutorials and Webflow Tutorial. So here you pretty much can give everything a description. You can give, um, let's see if it's not just you alone using this website. Let's say you are creating this for a client and you want them to know exactly what everything is. Um, you can give it your description. You can have um, the menu items names that you want. If you have a new way of saying add new or you are building something for a team that only speaks Spanish or any other language and you don't have your WordPress set up for their language, um, you can just go ahead and, you know, instead of having all items, you can have the Spanish or the other language version of it. And pretty much we're leaving all this as it is. I don't think we need to um, do anything with it. What we want to do is like right here, we want to say that this custom post type that we have created has an archive. And what this will allow us to do is to be able to create a taxonomy which are like different categories and stuff like that that will be connected to the blog post. So we're gonna see, from, we're gonna move this from false to true. And that's pretty much it. So now that we have done that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and save it. So we're gonna click add post type. And now if you want to edit anything on this, let's say you want to change um, what your users are going to see when they have to click add new, all you have to do is click edit post type. And right here you will see, um, right now we have two. All you have to do is click on the drop down, choose the Webflow tutorials. This is the one we just created. And you're going to be able to edit anything here. The next thing now that we want to do since we're here is that we want to be able to create that taxonomy that is going to be able to um, sort of put our categories and our post um, or archive together. So we're gonna click on add new or add or edit taxonomies. Um, we're gonna call this Webflow categories. And here Webflow categories again. And this one Webflow category. Um, what we, and as I said before, this is going to allow us to create categories for a specific post type. So what we want to do is that we want to, um, here where it says attached to a post type, um, we want to be able to choose Webflow tutorials. As you can see here, we have case studies, we have teams, we have the recommended tools. These are all the other uh, post types or custom post types that I have created on our website. And then you can do the same thing here. You know, if you need to change the description so people know what it is for, um, if you want to change the word then for like all items, add new item or add new category, all that goes right here. So once you are finished with that, um, just click add taxonomy. And now you have created your own post type, um, custom post types and also the categories. You will, if you go to the left menu, you're going to be able to see um, a new menu item on the left side called Webflow Tutorials for this case. And now what we want to do is that there's specific fields that we want the user to be able to fill in anytime we have a new uh, Webflow Tutorial. So we're gonna go now to custom fields and we're gonna click it. And now we're gonna add um, add new. I, right now I have advanced custom fields pro, but you do not need the pro version. Actually the free version is pretty useful. Um, the pro version only gives you the ability to do a few other things, but I don't really use it to be honest. It just came with something I got. Um, so now we just want to click add new. And we're going to give this a name. So we're going to see new Webflow tutorial. So now that we have given it a name, what we want to do is that we want to relate these fields that we are about to create with that a specific custom type that we have um, custom post type that we have created. So what we're gonna do now is that here where it says post, if you leave it as that, it will sort of mean like this will be added to your blog post, which are already part of WordPress. But what we want to do is that we want to add it to Webflow tutorials. Now, once we have done that, um, you can actually add it to multiple ones. So let's say I'm also doing some Elementor tutorials 
and I wanted to follow the same pattern per se, like the same fields that someone is to fill in, I just click end and then it will allow me to do that. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure it's active um, because it's we have a specific fields, we no longer need to have the you know the same way the WordPress normally looks. So we're gonna click seamless with no meta box. Um, position we want our new field to be right on top so whenever one of us hit um, so whenever whenever one of us goes into the website to edit a um, webflow tutorial it should be right after the title they don't need to scroll anymore we want it to be top aligned and instructions we want them to be below the label so if you read um, name right below it I want to tell you what this field is for and actually I want to change style to um, standard because we do want some of this to be SEO friendly so we want people when they type on Google you know we want to have all our meta tags just like how we have within any other pages to be able to do this and then we sort of um, here if you continue scrolling down you're going to see the excerpt we want that because we want to create a short description of what the tutorial is about um, we want to be able to edit our primal link we want to be able to see categories and we want to also be able to see a feature image. So now that we have that, we're gonna come across here where it says um, add field and we're going to start with, um, we want to start with an image that we're going to be using for this. So we're gonna call this post image or tutorial image. And it already creates a field image for us. And now we're going to look for image. And we're gonna give instructions if it's needed. And then for the size, let's just go for large and then afterwards on um, actual elementor, we can fix it. Um, doesn't need to be required really um, because we are doing it. But if it is something that a client is going to do, you should have it required. So we can add another one. Um, tutorial name require we just want that to be text we also want um, we just want to be able to write a description or all the content that we are going to need for the uh, post So we're gonna choose a text area because that will allow us to write more. Or you can actually put the, um, this one, the, what you see is what you get editor so that you are able to create um, just everything. Like if you're writing a blog post, And I think that's it for now. Um, that might be the only fields that we need. If we do need to add any extra fields or anything like that, um, I would just come back here <clears throat> and be able to edit it. Um, another thing that I'm just seeing here that you can do depending on the type of fields that you want to add. Let's say if you have a link to it, you want something to show, but if you don't have a link to it, you don't want the next field to show. So you have something called conditional logic to be able to do that, <clears throat> once you click yes, you will be able to interact with this part of it. But once you're finished with this, um, all you have to do is click publish. And now when we head over to Webflow Tutorials, let's click it and we're gonna click add new. So here you have um, the layout that we created pretty much. So we have to give it a title. Let's just call it um, Lincoln Dropbox to a background to a video background and then <clears throat> here we're gonna have the image that we want to use I'm just going to use this for the time being and then the name um, is the same as this so I'm just gonna copy it and here I have my entire um, description of what I'm going to be writing on so just like how you're writing a normal blog post um, this is where you can type all that information and um, when you are finished all you have to do is click publish once you're finished you can click publish I have it as a draft right now because I'm not using it at the moment I am currently going to be creating all the tutorials and all that but 
same thing you're gonna do with your categories so you can do like 3d interactions with webflow and save it and now it's here so, so that's pretty much it um that took us what about two plugins and what like five six minutes to be able to do everything just a little longer because i was explaining it to you um, one, so one thing I'll recommend though is that before you get into doing this, just plan it out. Make sure that you know the fields are going to be needed. Um, this is where designing before you develop actually helps quite a lot because you know exactly everything that you are going to need to be able to create this. And as you can see, it was really seamless. Um, it took us less like five minutes. Um, there was no code involved, even though you can do this with code. Um, and this way, you know, when your clients or um, your team or yourself, whenever you want to use WordPress, you can actually use it for what it was intended and create your own um, custom management system, libraries, and much more. The next video that I'm going to be doing though is going to be how I'm going to take this now that we created into an actual template that we're designing with dynamic content and we're going to put everything together within one page. So if you have enjoyed this content and you have enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button. So whenever we post the next video, you get a notification. And if you know anyone who might find this helpful or, you know, if you're trying it, let us know in the comments below so that we can give you some feedback or, or actually learn something brand new from you. So I will see you again in the next video. Content management library, nope. Con collection. So I'm going to show you in just a few steps how you can actually take WordPress and create your own. I uh, forgot the board again. Well, the thing I recommend though is that just before you actually create this, um, you know, this. So I will see you in the next video. Wait, wait, moment. moment.